Welcome to the Radiant Visalia podcast. Join us at one of our two services, 9 a.m. and 1045 a.m. Download the Church Center app or visit our website, radiantvisalia.com, to stay connected with us. All right, enjoy. The songs of Christmas are so important to us. They're so significant. Such an important part of this season, yeah? Um, Turn to your neighbor now, especially if you don't know your neighbor, tell them your favorite Christmas song. Your favorite Christmas song. Now, I want you to turn to your neighbor and share with them your least favorite Christmas song and hope that it's not their favorite song that they just told you. If they said drummer boy, pretend like you like drummer boy. Don't tell them you hate their favorite song. The songs are such a significant part of this season. What would Christmas be without these carols, without these uh, songs? As I researched kind of the songs that surround Christmas, I googled kind of just the top five Christmas albums of all time, the top five most selling Christmas albums of all time. And uh, I just want to share them with you because I thought it was so interesting. Because I'm, I'm sure you have albums that are coming to mind now. Number five comes to us from, <laughs> look at that. Look at that. I don't trust that guy. Number four is Bing Crosby. Yeah. By the way, this album has the the number one song of all time, but the album itself is number four. The number one song of all time is what? White Christmas. Yeah. Anyway, the album's number four. Number three. Oh. I don't want to. Number two, I'll warn you, uh, is also a little bit disappointing. Go ahead, show number two, Michael Buble. Hey, but you'll be happy to know in number one, the king reigns. The king reigns. It's good. The incarnation. God coming in Christ is the most sung about event in human history. God's descent into the mess of our humanity, bringing salvation, it has to be sung about. So it's like we can't just talk about this. It doesn't work to talk about it. We have to sing about this. And I don't care if you're Bach or Bing Crosby or Justin Bieber Everyone sings this tune. You have to. And I found myself asking the question, why? Why is this event so significant? Why all the art devoted to it? Why does everyone have to sing about this event? And at least one of the reasons, one of the reasons I came up with is that the implications of the incarnation are really far-reaching. They affect every area of our lives. So when we sing about Christ's coming, we aren't necessarily singing about something that's confined to a certain season or a certain time or a certain place. We're singing about something 
that changed everything. The implications of the incarnation are really far reaching. They touch every area of life. Think about it, how we think about God forever changed in Christ's coming. How we understand ourselves forever changed in Christ's coming. How we think about this life forever changed in Christ's coming. How we do relationships, not just with people, but our relationship with money and material things, our relationship with fear, our relationship with shame and failure, our relationships with our enemies, every relationship affected by his coming, especially our relationships with one another. The Apostle Paul, he experienced God's grace, experienced God stepping in to his mess. And he went on to plant churches and write parts of the Bible. And he's writing to one of the churches that he started. And he, this church was struggling to get along. The churches are like large families, maybe like your family. And, and community can be a really painful thing with loads of frustration. So he's writing to this community and he's trying to help them. He's trying to help them be united. He's trying to help them be reconciled. And I'm sure he's wondering, what can I say to this church? What can I say to this family to help them get on with one another? And all of a sudden it dawns on him, the incarnation. Christmas comes to mind for Paul. And he says in Philippians 2, in your relationships and how you handle your family and how you handle community, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself, even becoming obedient to death, death on a cross. Remember, in your relationships with one another, remember what Christ has done. Remember that he has come. This passage was originally written to a church. And do you know what the church in Philippi did with this passage? They made it a song. We have record that this is one of the first hymns. Because what? The incarnation. We can't just talk about it. We have to sing about it. This is theology on fire. You have to burst into song. When you grasp this, you can't just talk about it. It's more to it than that. God has come to save sinners. He's come to set the world right. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Everything has been touched by Him entering into our mess. God has done something in Christ that has changed everything. And that's why I think it's the most sung about event in human history. Another reason for this is there's a biblical precedent for this season to be surrounded in song. The biblical accounts of the birth of Jesus are full of song. The very first Christmas, full of song. So Bach, he's old, right? Real old but not as old as that Bible you hold. And the record of Jesus' birth is filled with song. Who sang the first song? Yeah. You didn't think I was going to call on you, did you? No. Do you know? Do you know the question? Angels. Yes. No. That's not it. It's not the angels. It could be. I think we're actually dealing with Mary, the mother of Jesus, which would make sense. She sings over Jesus. She sings about what Christ will do while Christ is in the womb. That makes sense. Probably the first person and maybe the last person to sing over you was your own uh, mother. But it's Mary, the mother of Jesus, who starts our obsession with Christmas songs. And you probably know the story that sets up the song, but let me share it for you again. The angel Gabriel comes to Mary, who is engaged to Joseph, and he drops the bomb on her. 
You're going to carry the Son of God. And He's going to reign forever. And in fact, there'll be no end to His kingdom, as Ken read to us from Isaiah. And then the angel says, oh yeah, you know, don't, don't be afraid. <laughs> okay, got it. And then Mary says, hey, I've got a little question. That question would be how. How will this happen? And then the angel goes on to explain things, right? Nothing's impossible for God. And Mary said, behold, I'm the servant of the Lord. And what did Mary say? Even if you don't know your Bible and you know the Beatles, what did Mary say? Let it be. Let it be to me. And the angel departed from her. And then once Mary gets the good news, the crazy news that she's going to carry God's son, God's Messiah, what does she do? Well, she does what any one of us would do when we get crazy news, right? Especially as a 16-year-old. What happens when you get crazy news? Oh, you sit on it for a long time? No, you call someone. You call someone. You share this. But it can't be just anyone. It has to be someone that you trust. Someone that knows what you're going through. And this angel tells Mary, hey, your relative Elizabeth, well, she also got a crazy birth announcement. So Mary does what? She runs to Elizabeth's house. And she busts through the doors. And uh, it's a crazy story. You can read it in Luke 1, but babies are leaping in the womb and Elizabeth is filled with the Spirit. And then Mary busts out in song. And here's the very first Christmas song. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior for He's looked on the humble estate of His servant. For behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He scattered the proud in his thoughts of their hearts. In the thoughts of their hearts, he's brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He's filled the hungry with good things and the rich he's sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his offspring forever. And I want to make a few comments about this first Christmas song. And I want to start right where it starts, right where Mary starts. She just launches in, my soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. And it's with this desire to magnify the Lord that Mary writes the first Christmas song. And that's what we're here to do, right? That's what we're here to do. Magnify the Lord. Exalt Him. Blow Him up. And rejoice in the salvation that's come. Not through our effort, but it's come from God, our Savior. I know you're like, well, I'm here because my aunt, I don't know, maybe. But I do think genuinely all of us, I don't want to assume too much, but I think all of us want to magnify the right things. And we don't want to see the wrong things grow, but we want to see the right things the main things, stay the main things in our lives. And we're designed as human beings to magnify things. There aren't some people here in the room who magnify things and others who don't. We all are meant to magnify someone or something. To magnify something is to give it an extraordinary large place in your life, your focus. What does your mind wander to when you have nothing else to think about? What do you think about when no one's telling you what to think? Your desires, they get shaped around what you magnify, what you make much of. Your identity is received from the thing that you magnify, the thing that you make much of. Your joy and your sorrows 
are affected by receiving what you magnify or going without what you magnify, we're all making much of something. You can make much of approval, security, emotions, evil, success, children. We can make much of just about anything, but trust me, we're all magnifying something. And Mary magnifies the Lord in song, and she rejoices in God, her Savior. How do we do this, Mary? I think we have a desire to do that. How do we do it? How do we live a life that magnifies the Lord? As we lean into the life of Mary, and I know the church has done strange stuff with Mary, but her life is worth leaning into. She has much to teach us. As we lean into her life, we see that she magnified the Lord in a posture of surrender. Her song is a song of surrender. And you cannot magnify Jesus if you have not recognized him as Lord. Surrender is an essential part of magnifying the Lord with our souls. She, to to use, I guess, more common language, she traded her plans for his. She did that. Gabriel comes, the angel comes and lays out the plan. And if you've read the plan, the plan has some questionable parts. The plan has some stuff that's shocking. In fact, And Mary in the text is really obviously surprised, but maybe the biggest surprise is that she says, all right, let it be. She says amen to this. Mary's life is about to be ripped apart. Life as she knows it is over. There is no Pinterest wedding anymore. That ship has sailed. There's no normal, you know... um, what do you call it when you have a baby? There's no baby shower that's, that's going to happen. Whatever picture she had for what this was going to look like was over. And she's not just going to have to trust God with her pregnancy. She's going to have to trust God with her very life. Because her let it be before God came before her I do with Joseph. She's about to be the talk of her small town. And this meant that Joseph could reject her. This meant that Joseph could have had her stoned if he saw fit. So we know how the story goes. And it's happily ever after, right? She had no clue what was going to come her way. But she magnified the Lord in trust and surrender. And she continually surrendered her picture of the way life should be and continually embraced God's plan for her life and magnified him. And this is a beautiful and powerful lesson that we learned for her, from her. And listen to me, those of you who are here and you long to magnify the Lord with me and with Mary, you'll never magnify the Lord if you yield only to what you see and only to what you understand and your plan for your life. You'll never make much of him if you continue to play small ball in that way. She surrendered in trust, and it's the same for anyone who wants to follow him. The last thing is that Mary magnified the Lord with a life of confident faith. When I say surrender, I know that you think, oh, that's a real passive approach. It wasn't a passive thing. It was a real bold act of courageous faith. It was a confidence that God would come through for her. It wasn't an act of passivity, an act of bold faith that I believe made much of the Lord and magnified him. Mary, if you, you read the song, right, with me? Mary is not singing a lullaby. That's not what this song is. This is, this is not just a mild-mannered virgin. This girl is spirited, bold, resolved, gutsy, full of courage. She sings, he has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he sent away Empty. What kind of lullaby is this? 
This is not a lullaby. This is straight up punk rock. That's what this is. The fir- Let it be known, the first Christmas song is a punk rock song from a 16-year-old with a lot of angst. In the 1980s, Guatemala banned this song. You could not read this song because it was deemed too politically subversive. And they knew exactly what this song was about. They understood what Mary... She's not, she's not singing, Away in a manger. That's not what's going on here. Silent. That's not the song. The song is, the empire is going to fall. And the mighty, they're going to be laid low. And the weak, they're going to be strong. And the poor, they're going to be rich. And those who are rejected and far off are going to be brought in. And they're going to be accepted. And earthly kings, earthly kings who think they're over the chessboard, they're just a pawn in Yahweh's hand. That's the song. It's a protest song, not a lullaby. And without getting into the context of Rome in the first century, or even Guatemala in the 80s, or even here and now, I I think that you know that kings, they don't like songs like this one. I don't care what side of the aisle you're on. Your guy doesn't like songs like this one. Kings and rulers, they like to think that they rule. And they don't like to be told that they don't. So this was a protest song. Notice her confidence. Notice her courage. She's magnifying the Lord by hoping in his government. She's magnifying the Lord by hoping in his leadership. She's magnifying the Lord by counting on his kingdom and making much of the promises that he's given. Notice the past tense. I was really struck by this as I read it this week. Notice the past tense. Help me here. She's a couple days into knowing she's pregnant. The audacity. Oh, he has done this. And he has done this. And he has. There's no might. There's no possibility. This is for her as good as done. And she's declaring it so. She's saying so in faith. This is what will happen. Not what we're hoping for. This is done. Faith is the assurance of what we hope for. And it magnifies the Lord. It glorifies Him. And in fact, without faith, it's impossible for us to please Him. God makes much of faith. Because faith is that virtue that makes much of God. Oh, He's going to do it. This is the charge from the very first Christmas song and the charge I would want to leave you with right now. Surrender to Jesus as Lord. Yield to Him. Make much of Him in every season and take courage for He will make good on His promises. Magnify the Lord and rejoice in your Savior and stop with your plans trying to save your own rear. Trust Him to save us. Magnify Him by surrendering to Him And having faith in his promises. Living confidently in the promises that he's given to us. Magnify the Lord with me. And walk in a confident faith. That the one who shocked the world with his first arrival will again shock the world with his return. And he'll find us ready because we've yielded our plans and embraced his plan for this planet. And we're walking in a confidence that he will do what he says he's going to do. Would you stand with me? And worship team, would you come? If you've been a Christian uh, for a long time, uh, you know this, but here's the deal with surrender. It doesn't just happen once. It's something we do daily, isn't it? 
So it's not just for those who are maybe far from God, but it's for those who are walking with God and wanting to continue to be in step. And you know, if you're a Christian, that placing your faith is not something you do once, but something you do over and over again. You say, no, 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 I take my, whatever I was betting on, whatever I was putting my confidence in, I transfer it. And so I just want to ask you tonight in response to magnify the Lord by once again saying, I surrender my plans. I yield to your plan for my life. And to magnify the Lord by saying, I put my faith in your promises and in what you said you're going to do. And I wait ready, longing for your appearing. I'm going to pray and I'm going to lead us in one more song together. Then we're going to make our way into the street and fill the streets and fill uh, Visalia with the sound of carols. Thank you, Jesus, for this night. Thank you for your descent into our mess. Would you come near to every hurting heart? We surrender. We trust. We place our faith in you once again. Thank you for your great and precious promises. Thank you for your work. And thank you for the opportunity to join with this choir that stretches throughout human history, exalting you. Thanks for listening. We want to be a resource for you as you walk with Jesus. So please connect with us at radiantvicelia.com. Until next time. Ah uh-huh.